Hello everyone, welcome to G-Centric. So, in this lecture we will see phasor relationship of the circuit elements. So, we will check first the resistor, inductor, capacitor, individual of, of the phasor diagrams. Then we will see combination of them in series and parallel. Okay. So, we will start with the first one resistance. Okay. So, for in this resistance what have done? We have taken a resistor of value R and have given the supply voltage supply that is in AC that is V of T is equal to V m sin omega T. So, the current across this resistor will be it is nothing but I of T is equal to V of T upon R. Okay. So, this V of T is nothing but V m sin omega T V m sin omega T upon R. Okay. So, then what will be the value of I of T? Go one more that is I m sin omega t. So, now if I have to draw the phasor diagram of R, uh, V of t and I of t. Okay. So, V of t it is also having the same frequency, I of t is also having the same frequency and in R there is no phase shift or the angle. So, I will take the voltage as the reference V of t. Okay. Then since they have the same frequency both current and voltage. So, even the current will be having the same phase direction, okay. but the magnitude will be different. Okay. So, the both the magnitudes of voltage or current it will be different. So, what we will say when they are in the same line, when they are on the same line then we will say that current and voltage are in phase, are in same phase or just phase. So, this is about the resistor. Next if we come to the inductor, okay, second element let us take inductor. So, this inductor, okay, this is the inductor which is given a current source, AC current source, okay, which is having the value of I of t equal to I m sin omega t. Okay, it is flowing in this direction. Okay, if inductor is a passive element. Okay, so it will enter the positive terminal and leave the negative terminal. So what we have to find? Voltage across the inductor. So how we will we find that? What is the formula for finding the voltage across the inductor? It is L of di of t by dt. Okay, so, this is the formula to find the inductor sorry voltage across the inductor. So, I will substitute the L I will keep as it is then I will substitute the value of I of t that is I m sin omega t. Okay. So, this, this is with respect to differentiation only t is there. So, this omega will come out. Okay. So, I m is also constant L into I m into omega of cos omega t. Okay. So, this is the differentiation of sin. So, it will be in plus only. Okay. So, now this is the VL of t. What can I write for this together? If I write Vm cos omega t. So, this whole together I will replace it with Vm. Then this I will write as it is cos omega t and this is VL of t. Okay. So, V m is nothing but equal to L into I m into omega. So, now how can I represent it in the phasor? I will write it here, I will rub it off. So, this V can be written as in the form of phasor as V over root 2. Okay. So, there is no phase shift. So, I will write it as 0 degrees. Okay. So, that is about the voltage across the inductor. So, now if we take a reference, okay, if we take this as the voltage as our reference, okay, I will take this as V. Now, I have to plot the I, but this is in the cos and that is in the sin. Okay. So, if I have to convert from cos to sin, what I have to do? Minus 90 degrees. I have to move minus 90 degrees. So, here Okay, but the always the phasor angle rotation will be in the anticlockwise. But since we have to get the 
voltage and the current waveform ok it has to conversion from cos to sin we have to take in this direction which is the direction of the i. So, now what we can conclude is that if you stand here and see that V is leading. So, I is lagging the in the, uh, voltage by 90 degrees. So, current lags voltage by 90 degrees or voltage leads current by 90 degrees. Okay. So, even you can take the current as also reference and draw it. Okay. You will get the same value. So, there is no difference. But may, maximum time since it is at 0 degree, voltage is at 0 degree, okay, we will write it as, we will take that as reference. Okay. But we have got for current we have got I m by root 2 but with a 0 minus 90 degree. Okay. So, that is this minus 90 degree presents this direction that is uh, lags by 90 degree with respect to the voltage. Okay. So, next we will see the instantaneous power and average power of this also. Okay. Okay. Before going into the instantaneous power and uh, average power, we will see one more concept that is impedance. So, impedance is nothing but the ratio of voltage to the current. Okay. So, in this case we have V m upon root 2 in terms of phasor. Okay. So, I m we have again by root 2, but with a minus 90 degree. Okay, so, this root 2 and this root 2 gets cancelled. So, now whenever this angle goes up it will be plus 90 degree and whenever it comes down it will be minus degrees. Okay, so, that is the thing we will do what we will do? We will take that up V m into I m plus 90 degrees. Now, we had seen V m is equal to L into I m omega. Okay. So, this was the replacement we had done while deriving it. Okay. So, we will substitute this value in V m L into I m into omega this is 90 degree. So, we have also seen that plus j is 90 degree minus j is minus 90 degree which has the magnitude 1. So, here also we will replace with j and this this I m get cancelled this L into omega into j. Okay. So, if I rearrange this one, I can write it as j omega l. Okay. So, this is nothing but the impedance. Now, this term that has been introduced omega l, we can write it as x into l. Okay. So, j x l. So, this x l we will call it as inductive reactance. Okay. So, this is the inductive reactance okay. z is equal to j x l. Okay. This one we will call it as inductive reactance. Now, we can in impedance basically the form is r plus j x. Okay. This is the general rectangular form that we will write for the z, but here the r is the real part and here it will be always the reactance part or reactive part. Okay. So, this either can be L or for C. We will call induct inductive reactance or capacitive reactance based on the subscript we write XC or XL. Here we have XL. So, we will write it as inductive reactance. So, this is related with the inductive the uh, inductor that is why we will call it as inductive reactance. So, now if we have to find the instantaneous power P of t it is nothing but I of t into V of t. Okay. So, we have the I of t as I m sin omega t, we have V of t as V m cos omega t. So, the derivation that we have done. So, now for that I will rearrange this one V m into I m sin omega t cos omega t. Okay. So, now I will what I will do? I will multiply and divide by 2. V m I m by 2 into so 2 sin omega t cos omega t. Okay. So, we will get it as this is the again trigonometric formula we will get it as sin 2 omega t. Okay. Here also we will see that it is the twice the frequency of the 
voltage frequency or the current frequency. What it is the frequency? Instantaneous power frequency. Either it will be twice of the current or the voltage. Okay. So, this is the instantaneous power. Now, if you have to find the average power, so what it will be? 1 over 2 pi. If you assume that the sinusoidal wave we are taking the time period as 2 pi. So, substitute this one. sin 2 omega t. So, again if you substitute 2 pi, you will get it as 0. The whole term will be 0. So, p average implies p average is 0. So, the average power for the inductor will be always 0. Okay. So, that is the reason we will say that average power of it, it is the active power or the useful power. Okay. So, in the we will see the graph of this one. Okay, how it will, we will again multiply the current and voltage, we will take the amplitude and we will see what we will get in the waveform. Okay, so I have drawn the axis. Now, I will draw voltage. So, basically first I will draw current, okay, that is the sine function. Okay, so this is I of t. Now, Vm cos omega t. So, cos does not start from the origin. Okay, so, here it will go in this direction. Okay, so, this is sin. Okay. Now, if I have to draw the average power waveform, sorry. If I have to draw the waveform of the average, okay, so this is this one, then I have this one, this part this part and the this part okay so this is plus and plus i will get multiplication of that amplitude okay now here i have got 1 plus and 1 minus so in this area i've got 1 plus and 1 minus plus into minus will be minus so this is positive and this is negative okay now again if i move to this area i have got both negative so i'll get positive now, if I go to this area, one is positive, okay, one is negative. So, I will get negative waveform. Similarly, this pattern continues. So, now if you take the average power plus minus plus minus, okay, then you will get the average as 0, 0 watts, okay. So, the useful power or the active power, we will call it as 0. Okay, so, we have also the reactive power, we will see in the, when we study about the powers. Okay. So, that reactive power either can be XL or in X ter XC terms. Okay. So, this is about the waveform of the uh, inductor and we have seen the individual waveforms, uh, individual phasor diagrams of the uh, resistance and inductor. So, resistance, voltage and current will always be in phase, but whereas for the uh, inductor thing, current lags the voltage by 90 degrees or you can say voltage leads current by 90 degrees either of the way both are correct and phases always how do we represent it in the anti-clockwise direction which is in the positive direction. So, it is also an universally adopted convention. Okay. So, in the next lecture we will see about the capacitive waveform phasor and we will see one topic that is left out form factor and the peak factor. After completion of that we will move on to the combination of these phasor RLRC and RLC with series and parallel. Okay, thank you.